Well, it's Sunday afternoon and uh, we're back uh, with the churches. And uh, this is the start of the, the Norman churches. And uh, actually, it's my local church in Stansley Mount Fitchett. And this is St. Mary's. And it was founded by uh, William Greno in about 1120. Now, he actually built the castle, which we will visit uh, another time. Uh, and William Greno, he was, a bit of a, he was a bit of a clever chap. And he used to, uh, he, he, he rebuilt the castle, which has got some um, Saxon origins. And he put this church up. And he was known as De Monte Fixo. William de Monte Fixo, which turns into Mount Fitchett, and actually the family name, uh, they dropped the Greno and they actually adopted Mount Fitchett uh, because of that. And, uh, and here we are, and we are looking at the most beautiful North Norman doorway. This church, as I say, this is one of the original parts of, that's existed of the church now, 1120s, a sumptuous Norman doorway. Look at those gorgeous pillars there's how many is there one two three pillars either side with lovely uh look at those scallop moldings absolutely beautiful you've got a, a, a tympium up here and it's just got these lovely uh, sort of crosses in circles look at that absolutely beautiful and then you've got loads of different orders we've got dog tooth molding we've got zigzag we've got petaled crosses We've got more zigzag, all in the Byzantine uh, style. It's absolutely gorgeous. And his hood moulding, look at this. And with this lovely billet moulding just around the hood. I mean, you know, I mean, I could just pan around here for ages. It's absolutely beautiful. What a lovely door. Now, originally, this door would have been, because this, this is a chapel that was built on later. So the door would have been further in, but we'll talk about that um, in a minute. So just coming round to the, the west side, we, we've got a tower here, and um, I've read this up, it's, uh, it was built in 1691, so it's absolutely precise, um, it's a lovely red brick tower, uh, so this church has got a mixture of dates, um, and obviously you've got these um, lovely sort of gothic uh, windows in the tower, it's absolutely gorgeous. Let's just take in the church from this angle, because it is a whacking great church, I mean it's big, and what you can see there, is the um you can well you obviously you can see the the nave here uh which uh, that's that'd be part of the original nave uh but the windows would have all been uh done up in the restoration around 1880s i mean this church was going to be pulled down then uh just left to ruin but uh, thankfully the gothic revivalists uh, stepped in and really saved this little gem and we're very lucky uh, there's the uh, the chancel again originally that would have been shorter that is now, uh, that was lengthened about in the 1300s. Now just coming around to the chancel, you can see here that there is um, evidence of a, an earlier window. This would have been put in in the second phase um, of its history, around the 1300s. And then we come round here to the, the, chancel, uh, the chancel window. And again, this has all been heavily restored, but it's in roughly the same position. The chancel, I think, was extended at some point. And then we have this chapel. Now the chapel was um, built in two phases. And the second phase, it came out on this eastern wall in line. Uh, and this is around um, the 14th century. And that window is original. It's been slightly restored, but look at it. It's absolute gothic beauty, that. Now we're standing, we're looking at the north side of the church and we can see uh, the, the chapel here. Uh, and then you can see this later uh, extension off of the actual nave, uh, which I think uh, that was put up around 1820s. Uh, apparently the walls bulged because there wasn't actually an Arcadian inside. It was all solid, you'll see when we go in. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful view. So here we are at the, uh, the south door. Now this porch uh, is another little bit of uh, Gothic architecture by the uh, Francis Thomas Dolman, who uh, carried out the extensive works in the it's 1887 to 1888. It was only a year or so. They were really busy. And uh, here we are, this is another stunning door. And uh, the good news is, you can see it's this church open, so hopefully uh, there won't be a problem here. But now look, we have a very similar door to uh, the north one. And you've got this beautiful tympion with these lozenge patterns um, inside it. Uh, we've got, oh, look at those gorgeous. So we've only got two columns on either side here. Uh, with, oh, look at that, that's lovely. And you've got more dog tooth molding, uh, followed by zigzag and more zigzag. Uh, absolutely scalloped uh, capitals there on top of the of the pillars. It's beautiful and um, well Let's see if it's true
Is it open? Yes, it's open. Fantastic. What have we got? We've got a very dark church, but hopefully all the lights will come on um, and they're not, so never mind. Now, what we have in here is a massive nave. Now, originally, um, these uh, arcade into the, the left here, this would have been the actual north wall. Uh, again, Dolman actually did all these arcades in the 1880s. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this aisle to the left beyond there didn't exist. That's what they, that was built in the 1820s, and without all this arcading, it was one massive great big area, and the walls bulged, and uh, you know it was in a mess 60 years later, um, and they saved it, well Dolman certainly did, and uh, thank goodness he did. And now let's just walk down this beautiful nave, we've got the most gorgeous stained glass, again put in there by uh, in the period of the 1880s, absolutely stunning, got these lovely bell roof, look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. But, star of the show, another part of the original church from about 1120 is this stunning Norman chancel arch, and it's absolutely very nice indeed. We've got, just see how big it is, huge, it's absolutely lovely, and we've got an absolutely gorgeous mouldings around the actual hood, look at that, and this, can't actually see. I'll see if I can take some close-ups and jot them in, but we've got human faces up there um, above the actual more zigzag pattern. Absolutely lovely. Huge. And then into the chancel. Now this chancel was extended in around the 1400s, I believe, uh, but it's still absolutely magnificent. We've got these lovely Gothic windows. They've been heavily restored, but, uh, you yeah, know, hey, and then we've got this chapel. Now this chapel that was put onto the side here uh, was done in two stages. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's just go up to the high altar here. And within the high altar, with this stunning stained glass window, we have the tomb of the family that were around here in about the 1600s. And it's the, let's just have a look, Thomas Middleton. Look at that. Now he died, I think, 1630. Absolutely amazing condition. This is a marble effigy. Look at that. And we've got these beautiful sabatons. And you can see by this period as well, they're sort of the rounded toed sabatons, full greaves. And they put these lovely little studs, metal studs actually in, uh, to make it look just more realistic. And you can just see uh, just the creases just underneath here, the top part of the leg armour. Um, sadly, we're missing the hilt of the sword, but uh, never mind. Look at this lovely, this lovely van braces and the rear brace. And it's interesting because he's got, look at that, it's fantastic. He's got this lovely big ruff. Now, that's not really in by about 1630, but, you know, as a young man, he would have looked like that. And um, it is quite impressive. And there's even fine detail carved inside the actual ruff there. Look at that, it's beautiful. And this gorgeous cushion, look at that. You can just see, you just really rest in the weight of his head on that cushion. It's absolutely magnificent. We pull back and just see the size of this magnificent monument. Absolutely gorgeous. And look down here. Look at the, look at those skulls. Aren't they amazing? Wow. Let's take a look down through. It's very, very dark. I haven't got much light in here, but this is the best lit part. Now, you have this arcading that's following through. Now, that one is another Dolman special, but this arcade here is original. So, if we take a little stroll outside of here and then go into this chapel. Now, this chapel was built, as I said, in two phases. The first phase only came up to about here. Uh, and underneath we have another, well, here's some, there's Lord of the Manor in about the 1340s. And this chap is, I believe, it's Richard de Lancaster. He died about 1297, I think, but it could be his son John, who died about 1331, I believe. Now, he's missing his forearms, which is a real shame, but um, nevertheless, absolutely splendid. He's got a lovely chainmail coif on there. You haven't actually got much detail of the actual mail. It could have just worn in time. Um, and so he's, he's, has he got, can I see a sword there? Well, there's part of the sword left there, and there's the, there's the scabbard. And then cross legs, 
which some would say he represents because that's being holy really, and he's resting on a lion. Look at that, absolutely beautiful, wonderful. And so then we come round here to the actual chapel was extended to go flush with the east chancel there a bit later on in his life and this is original it's been restored a little bit but it's not bad at all and then we've got a lovely original casino there look at that that's gorgeous wow now here, um, this is Hester Middleton. She was the daughter of Thomas Middleton, and sadly she died apparently in a hunting accident. Apparently she was um, you know, gored by a stag. Uh, that's, that's what the story says. Um, and absolutely, the detail is stunning. This is high, high order um, work at all on this hour. Oh, I mean, look at the sleeves. It's absolutely, the lace detail on those sleeves is beautiful. This is all in marble, and look at that collar. Now that's a collar. You thought you had big collars in the 1970s. No, no, no. This is absolutely beautiful. And she's got this wonderful hat on. So this is a period, it's going to be about 1614, which I think is the year she died. Look at the cushion on there. You know, you've just got to come and see this. And she's got absolutely, it's in macular condition. A little bit of loss on the nose there, but, you know, and a little bit on the fingers, but nothing. And look at this lovely tight bodice just runs into the folds on this dress and it's lovely and you'd think actually that she's lost her legs but no I mean, it's so dark you really can't see but you literally can see the soles of her feet just in here so there she is and I've spanned this and it's about five foot so that's about right for a, a lady of, of that period absolutely wonderful and now just look at this huge huge arcade in now that's a chest that's a lovely one and this is around 1700 and uh you know this is where all the documents and important things would have been kept and you can see it's got three locks on here there's one two three so the vicar would have had one and the two church wardens so all three would have had to have been in attendance uh to actually open this uh so there's a good safety procedure there so this is truly a wonderful parish church and i'm very proud uh, that it's actually my local church and uh, I would have started uh, with this one, but of course I wanted to go for the Saxon origins. And uh, but what a great one to start uh, for the Norman series. And uh, well, let's finish with this font. Look at that. That is around circa 1200, apparently. It's huge. It's circular. It's got these beautiful carved volutes either side. Uh, there's four of those, and a lovely cover, which to me looks mm, sort of 18th century. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a wonderful place. A lovely church.